Now, I know I've talked to you before about this day. I mean, it's a personal issue for me, so I apologize if my emotions get a little wrapped up in it. But uh, when I first came here to Mount Allison, uh, what I was, one of the big things I wanted to do was study abroad. And in my tour guide, everything that I was told is that Mount A would uh, be able to help me with, uh, with hopefully a trip over to Spain. And so I was feeling pretty sure that I would get to do that when I got into, uh, into my second and third year. And then upon arriving to that time, uh, I was informed that the program had been canceled well before I was uh, informed that it would be something that would be realistic. And I feel like that we're such an international school, we have people from all over the world coming here, and there's a lot of pride in that. I think it's something that's amazing about the school. But at the same time, we don't give a lot of our students that access to a study abroad program in enough numbers or through financial support from the university itself. Now, we'd like to set up uh, you know, big posters upstairs and speak about all the programs that we have, most of which are outside of our actual academic stand, uh, stand, or setup anyway. So how do you think um, you'll improve this situation by giving students more opportunity and, above all, more financial support from the university itself? Right. I, well, I would, I would re respond that we need to start with collaboration. So while, while this, this term, we can, we can get lost in translation, I, what I mean is negotiating with the administration and the faculty. So that means with the, with the, with the unions that represent them to become, to become a permanent fixture on their boards. Uh, and so that we can, because we're, the students' union has quite a bit of capital. We generate capital through student fees. We're able to, to begin programs if we can negotiate with the, with the university. And what I mean is if we, if we feel, if the students feel, uh, that we should begin a new study abroad program, any, anywhere that, you know, anywhere that um, we think is necessary, we can help fund that. So we can begin, if we're collaborating with the administration and with the faculty, we can begin a matching grant. We're able, we're able to put aside some of, the, some of the funds and start an international scholarship, uh, per se. So we can, if, if, we, if we dedicate a certain amount of our budget uh, to, to an international program, or whatever the students want, then if we're collaborating, we can get matching grants from the faculty and from the, and from the university administration. This, this can happen as long as we're, as long as we're in constant collaboration. Thanks. Over the last couple of years throughout the SAC, we've experienced a lot of false promises, platitudes, empty smiles, and we've experienced a lot of attrition within the SAC. How do you, how do you think, why do you think this has been happening, and how do you, as our face, our voice, as a student populace, expect to prevent this from happening in the future? Because with so much turnover at the SAC, it's very difficult to be a student to truly have confidence who are running our student union when they might change by yearly. What do you expect, like what do you think is the core problem and how do you combat it? Sure, uh, 90 seconds is not enough time, uh, but I'll, I'll attempt. So it, 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 begins, it begins with retention. Uh, and what, what that means is that we need to keep, we need to keep people uh, year after year. And we need to be actively recruiting students who would fill positions that we need filled in the following years. So it, whether that means, I, one of, one of the, my goals for next year in council is to make us more committee based. And, that, and by doing that, that makes all students on council experts in the field I, that, not, that they're sitting on committees. I, so when they come to council, they come prepared and they take ownership over the, over the activities and, I, and, what, and what their committee is pushing for. So they also, I, when, when we think about uh, a face for the university. I, I, I argue that I'm not the face of the, if, if I am elected, I would not be the face of the university. I would be accountable uh, to all the committees and to council, but also I would be sitting on, I, I, I'm the first among equals, is what a prime minister is. Uh, and so that's how, that's how I see our, this position, is that I can sit on as many committees as I want, but it's my responsibility to make everybody else, uh, to make everybody else uh, function in their roles, and so recruitment and retention, and also making it, allowing everybody to take ownership over uh, over their responsibilities, and that's through committees. Thank you. Sam, you have brought up in your speech something that kind of makes me go a little crazy, and that's convention, and it's something that's Canadian, it's from America. I don't really understand it, and they never really have. 
And uh, the, one of the biggest conventions in Canada is the Convention of Responsible Government. And what I feel the SAC is lacking is the responsible SAC of the actually individual elected members getting out there and representing the students and going out to the students and hearing what they have to say. I don't feel like there's enough visibility of some of the people that have been elected into the SAC. How would you suppose that, how would you encourage or what would you do to make sure that next year we have a more responsible and a more representative SAC? Uh, SAC Sorry, elected SAC officials out there. Okay, so there's two parts to this question, I think, is, uh, is responsibility and accountability of individual members. Uh, and then the second part, which I'll address uh, as well, is, um, is our visibility uh, to students. So individual members, uh, with, with a committee-based uh, based council, their individual members play less of a role than the collaboration amongst uh, amongst individuals. So if, if we have experts in committees, uh, then not only are they responsible to their committee members, but the rest of council sees that. The rest of council is, needs or will hold them accountable because they're putting equally the same amount of effort into their own committees. Uh, and secondly, I, I, hope, I hope to begin a video address once a month uh, next year and it will hopefully be uh, broadcast here and on our YouTube channel. I've been, uh, I've been in contact with the administration as well as potential candidates uh, for next year's uh, VP Communications. And I hope to, I hope to begin uh, bringing our accomplishments back to the students uh, because it, really this SEC accomplishes so much. We, the, the structure that we have for do, uh, divvying out money for clubs and societies and for academic enrichment are such a well-oiled machine, they get no recognition. So not only do we bring our accomplishments to students, uh, that allows students to interact with us and to create dialogue. Thanks. Um, so something that I've been seeing, there seems to be this disconnect between the administration and the students. A lot of things like time and time again have happened that the administration has imposed on the students, things that affect uh, all of us, um, like some examples like this English 1201 discussing things like the changes with the mass emails, things like that have been imposed on students kind of without consultation. So how do you propose we fix these kind of problems of um, students not necessarily being heard and seeing as you if elected would be that link between students and administration? That's a great question. I, and I, I, it has to, a lot to do, well, it, the foundation of the question is about reaction or proaction. I, and the way, what, what the SAC has been doing no fault of individuals, uh, but for well, since since I've been here, is reacting to decisions made by the administration. Uh, so what we need to do is my plan is to rework our constitution so that it is in line with the University Act, so that we have a partnership. We're not looking for concessions from the university. We're looking to be uh, to be involved in every level of any decision. So that means. Uh, that means we need to negotiate with the unions, but also with the administration so that we can be sitting on all committees uh, and that we can have increased representation on the Board of Regents at the highest level uh, and so, so that we can pr be proactive and introduce, uh, introduce the initiatives that we want to see happen. So, if, for example, uh, if, if we take, say, per course tuition, uh, which, which was two years ago, we signed a, a petition, and many students did. Uh, the problem with that is that we didn't understand how the university worked. Uh, taking a petition straight away without negotiations uh, is, is certainly a way to prove that we're not capable of, of making real change. So we need to be in, in cahoots with the university and holding them accountable at the highest level, not in reaction. That would be my answer. Thank you. Sam, uh, I was intrigued when you said that you wanted to rewrite the Constitution to be, uh, I guess, in, in schools with the university. So I'd like you to briefly tell me the difference between the Constitution and the bylaws, how the two are different in terms of amending them, and how you can go about changing it to, I guess, be in cahoots with the university. Because I didn't quite get that when I was reading your campaign. I didn't understand that. Thanks. Uh, and this has been brought up to me. Uh, 